The Chauncey Hayden Show is sponsored by Stitcher Radio. Listen on the go via the Stitcher mobile app. For more information, go to stitcher.com slash GFQ. Location provided by Sapphire New York. Visit them at nysapphire.com. You think you have me all down. You think me have me. I will always be one step ahead. Don't hurt me for real. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, look at her teeth. No, she has fangs. I'm not even kidding. Ah! 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 Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Are you insane? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Chauncey Hayden Show, broadcasting live from the Sapphire Gentlemen's Club in New York City, home of the world's greatest whatever they have here. I don't feel comfortable saying it in front of a woman. I, you, I'm so uptight that you're here. Charlotte, sometimes, we, we, we thought that you were going to not come into the studio, that once you realized that we were in a gentleman's club, that it might be, you know, a little too much for you to handle. But you, you came in like a trooper. Listen, you came in better than most guys come in. Well, you know, I love the ladies. You know, I'm here to support. So, uh, you know. Well, we had a bet. We said, well, she's a, <laughs> she's a, she's a woman, but she's also a rock and roller. So, so that's kind of like the rock and roll thing. This should be a right up her alley, right? This is where you, this is your environment. Hey, man, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily call it my environment. However, I uh, I can hang anywhere. If there's booze and pretty people, I'm always down to hang. Oh, well, I can't help. You. Then you're in the wrong room. <laughs> then you just walked into the wrong room. Yeah, I better go. Yeah, <laughs> there's no booze and there's no pretty people. So we'll just go to a commercial break and we'll bring on our next guest. <laughs> No, you seem so down to earth and so cool. And, and of course, people know you, Charlotte, sometimes, which is a cool name, sometimes. Like that, Thank you. But, uh, can I say something? You, you can no, because say I, something. No, because I, I want to talk to you about your name. Because okay, I love the name sometimes. Okay. It's a cool, rock and roll, edgy, kind of warp tour kind of name. But your birth name is Poland. Like the country. Now, I'm going to ask you the <laughs> stupidest question you've ever been asked in your life. Okay. If your last name is Poland, does that make you Polish? No. The, see, Poland is I'm, actually. I'm a, so glad I asked. Okay, Poland is actually a Scottish last name, and I'm not Scottish either. So. How funny is that? <laughs> so if your last, so Poland is not Polish. Correct. So I wonder if your last name is German, if it's not, you're not German, or if your last I name is Irish. I've never really given it much thought. I always just was angry that my last name was Poland and I wasn't related to the people who own Poland Springs. So that I like just could be like a Harris of Poland Springs. Good point, but, but you don't need to be because you're a successful musician and <laughs> making millions of dollars touring. Oh, oh yeah, I'm sure. It's, you, you, you became well known across the country when you were on The Voice, the NBC hit show The Voice. But, but this is what I find interesting about that, because you were already a recording artist when you did The Voice, and usually when you see, you, you see these shows, it's for people struggling just for their, their voice to be heard. But you had success already, so I was surprised that you did The Voice. You know, I get, I get that a lot. Um, the Voice actually, and it's really clear on their programming, is that they do not... Um, it's not just for amateurs, and by amateurs I mean people who don't do it professionally. Right. Um, so they've made it clear that that in this industry you need more than one chance. Um, it's it's just like a job. If you get fired from your first job, do you stop applying for jobs? Right. You no, of course not. You keep applying. I wasn't so sure like, the answer. Thank God. No. I, I, I thought you were asking me, and I, and I didn't really know the answer, so I was afraid. Thank, so thank you. so okay. in music, it just because. You've been signed before. It doesn't mean you stop playing music just because you've been signed and dropped. Right. So it's always just who you are. So I think what's really cool about the show is they kind of recruit people that that have been signed before or that do this professionally, but maybe need um, an extra push. Maybe they don't have the following that they could have had or whatever it is, um, and they pride themselves on that. And they actually the casting people actually call those um, artists and ask them to audition and then they also have the open call for people who who've never done it before as well. So are you considered a ringer when you come in like someone who really knows the ropes already? Yeah I would say that most of the people that I would say about 70% of the people or more on that show know what they're doing. And, and you were one of the few that got everybody to turn around all the judges 
turned around for you. It was pretty crazy. So that would be a cool feeling. It was, and the same thing, like people say, well, you know, you've done this already, and it's like, mm, I have never been on national television with like yeah. singing for four amazing judges that like I was, am hoping that... Who, when you were on, who were the judges, who were the four? You... Um, there's the original, so Adam Levine, um, Christina Aguilera, Blake Shelton, and Cee Green. Do you know, Christina, I can't say her last name, say it, I dare you to say it. Well, now you're making me nervous. I, now I feel like I should say it. It's so hard it to say, right? Say it Aguilera, times. Aguilera. I, I say Christina Aguilera, but I always say it differently. Making I always say Aguilera. No, that's, that's not. How, how that's all I can say. So I said, that's, and that's as close I get, right? Andrew, I, I okay. suck at names. Well, I'm gonna try it again. You ready? Okay. Watch how it comes out now. Aguilera. Yeah, that was awful. It, and that's the best. And that's as close as you're getting. You say it. I'm good on it now. You say it. Go you're ahead. making me nervous. Say it. I don't want to say it anymore. No, but you can't. I bet I can. But you can. I bet I can. If you could say, you say it. Regular. In your face. That girl. <laughs> she, she, you know, she's a Jersey girl. She's from Jersey City. You did build that. She grew up with a mother, a lot, like in an apartment. And they used to, I had a magazine, and they used to come to our office to place an ad. And she used to do track act songs in Jersey. She's yeah. awesome. I, I, I only got mad love for Christina, so anyone gives her stuff, I'm, they have me to answer to. You, so, so. <laughs> You did. You kicked ass on that, but then the next week comes along when they had the voting, that, and you got. Well, I was on it for more than that, but yes, after the second live show, that right, kicked off. That had to be disappointing. Were you? Or you said, wait, wait a second. I, I'm better than these people. You, is it fixed? In other words, it's fixed, isn't it? The voice that you can I, say it. I have no idea. I have no idea. I all I know is that it was a really great experience, and then. When it was time for it to be over, it was it was over. It, it's it's totally bogus. It's gotta <laughs> I, be. I never thought for a second that I was better than anybody, though. I think that everyone deserved to be there, and and I think that art is subjective, and so is voices. So you know, I'm I'm not everyone's cup of tea, so that's okay. You're all cup of tea. I like you. I do. I like you. I, I can drink with you. I can party with you. Well, I definitely rage pretty hard. Let's be Are honest. you a whiskey drinker? You know what? Nowadays I've been drinking a little bit whiskey, but I'm more of a tequila and wine drinker. Patron, silver. Yeah, yeah. You know what I like about your voice? You have that raspy, that raspy, sexy voice. Thank you. I like that. Thanks. Are that, you creeping on me a little bit? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> what does that mean, Andrew? Is that is that bad? You're a creep. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I am. Um, all right. So you did the voice. Yes. That comes and goes. Now, now you start putting out. You are on Geffen Records. This actually was on Geffen Interscope Records before I did the voice. Oh, okay, yeah. but th but then now th at what point things go a little little sour, right? Like you you got dropped or the voice you had a down period. And yes. You, and you had to fight back. Yes. Yeah, so when I I got signed when I was 19 years old, and then I was dropped by age 20. Geffen folded and became just became Microscope. Right. Um, and then, um, so that, I signed a five album deal, I released a single. It, I did actually well, but just, I mean, they also it's dropped so the Counting Crows that year. Yeah, so. it's so hard. How, <laughs> it's like, it's the surprised. hardest industry in the world. How hard is it to get the kind of numbers it takes? I mean, it's impossible, right? Well, nowadays yeah. it is because it's, I mean, major labels are. They don't exist. Well, they're all like it's basically one. I feel I feel like it's just like one label now. So, right. um, well, that didn't work out. I left my management at the time, and so then I was about twenty one, and then from twenty one till, um, oh gosh, I guess until I was like twenty three, I was just focusing on being a songwriter, and then um, I then I got a call from the Voice, and then I did that. There's a part of your life. That that's so interesting. To hear two parts of your life. Oh gosh, you don't even know the half of it. Yeah. <laughs> How do you know what we know? Oh uh, shit. I mean, no, but the the one thing we do know, and, and it's in your bio, and I found it so moving, was your physical problem with your yes. jaw. He's that, talking about my third nipple. <laughs> I'm talking about talking about your, as we all know, your third nipple, which is such a fascinating story. Totally Most people don't have a third nipple. The fact that you do is just so remarkable. And yet you still became start yeah, and you still became a singer despite that. Despite handicap. all the no, you, no, you you um you developed a jaw disease when and especially yeah. as a singer, you know of all the things to happen, and, and you they took a part of your rib. <laughs> yeah. And, and and you're a woman, so you're missing ribs to begin with. Like you don't have a lot of ribs to, to be tossing around. Well, yeah, go ahead. And, and then they took part of your rib and they. 
they made a jaw, right? Is that yeah. what they did? And yeah. they reconstructed your jaw? You never know. You look amazing. Thank you. Stop it. Go on. Uh, you know, it's pretty crazy. But your ribs, uh, I don't know if it's for your whole life, but at least in your, like, um, in your youth, ribs grow back. Right. So the ribs they took grew back. Um, they, they regenerate. Okay. That's not the word we're going to, that's not the right word, but yes. <laughs> Like Wolverine? I don't know. I'm, I'm just asking. I, she said the ribs come back. So that that means like a Wolverine thing. I mean, you, yeah, yeah. You, you, so they, they come back. Yeah. And um, and then they yeah they took two ribs, they cut them in half, and then they just replaced wow. my face. That's amazing. A lot of my friends call me a McRib face. It's cool. McRib face. <laughs> no, but, you look, but you, I'm telling you, your beauty, your beauty. Are you gonna say I'm creeping on you? No, but you're a beautiful girl. You never know. <laughs> Thank you. Anything was wrong. So. Thank you. I mean, there's plenty still, wrong with me. But you still have, have, but it's yeah, still so. an ongoing problem. Like you still have to kind of. Well, you have to just watch it. I mean, I get X-rays, like you know, at least every few years. Right. Um, but I, I've been fine. I mean, when I got my surgery, I was 16. And then. Did it affect your singing? The way you sing in any way? Did it affect the way you? You know, you know, vocalize. I think that it affected the way I vocalize in the sense that I had a disease for a few years and I had to move my face into different positions that were right. comfortable in order for me to sing, right. which has created the sound that I have now. So when I sing a lot of times when I'm performing, I look awful in pictures because I think I'm making the faces that I, when I used to have my disease so my face kind of contorts in like these weird little well, things but cool. it creates my that. cool little noises i guess it may, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's giving you that's your mo your thing it, you, that's your yeah it's, it photographs horribly um oh, i don't believe but... that no you're too you're too <laughs> too attractive um no but Man, you're... how much are you drinking <laughs> no I'm, I'm, I'm totally stop Already, I came to I came to be nice to a guest. That's what I. I'm never being nice to a guest again. Oh please, be nice to me. I'm just gonna give you a shit about it. But um, continue. So the other thing <laughs> about your life is that you're adopted. I oh, am. Yeah. And you discovered your mom. You met your mom when you were 13 years old, which is like such an important part of your life. You're 13. How traumatic is that? What is that like when she comes into your life? You know, it wasn't like this crazy thing for me. It just was like, okay, well, that's the woman who gave life to me and she seems pretty cool and it just you know I have a relationship with her now but it's not like I mean we just talk every once in a while and and it you know I'm very satisfied with the family that I was given and so I don't feel like it's just an, it's just more people to love I don't know it's gotta be a weird thing for the family like the mom like your, your adopted mom like they don't know what your reaction is gonna be if you you know your feelings are gonna change you know, it's such a complicated it is, mind fuck. It's complicated, but I think that family's family. It doesn't matter if you're blood related to them or you're not. Like my family's my family. So even if like I met my birth mom and I was like, oh my gosh, that's my mom, wouldn't stop my other mom from being my mother. Do you know what I mean? It's just a different type of mother, and it just it's and as a female, I think they both understand that, you know, and I think. They're really, I mean, I'm sure there's uncomfortable moments, but there's, it's not a competition. They both have a place in my life. It's better to know. It's better than wonder, right? I guess. I mean, some, you know, I have some adopted friends who don't want to know, and that's fine. I, I didn't necessarily want to meet my birth mother at first. It just, it just a accidentally Imagine happened. I was your father. Like, imagine you found out I was your dad. How disappointing that would be. It would be really disappointing. <laughs> what, what an awful, what an awful day that would be in your life. It would be pretty bad. I don't, I don't think yeah. we look anything alike, so I think we're okay. Well, you know, I'm half Jamaican, so you could, you could be Jamaican. Oh yeah. You, I, I'm very dark from like here down. Oh my god. Yeah, it gets very dark. Um, so, so, so listen, you are now getting ready for the walk tour. Yeah. But you already been on the walk tour in 2008. Yes. So that has to be a great feeling. When you're out there touring that, and you're on stage in front of all those people, like, what's better than that? Right? Nothing really. I mean, I think it's the best when you get to share an experience with an audience and they're really into it. It's also the worst when they're not into it. So it could be... Have you run into experiences <laughs> where you're performing and people are like, uh... No, no one's ever booed me or anything. But people have, like, not paid attention, which I always find their indifference more frustrating. 
Do you ever stop? Do you, you like Chanel Kana? Do you ever stop singing and say, I'll start again when you sh when you shut up and listen? Oh, I do that all the time, but I'm kind of a bitch. Really? Um, but no, so I you yell, you yell at the audience. Like, you actually yell at the audience. No, I, I wouldn't say I yell. What I do... Scold them. No, I don't think it's... I think it's best to... I don't scold because I don't think that gets people's attention. I think mm. what I do is that I unplug my guitar and I go and I into the audience and then I start singing until they all are like confused why where, where the music go right. and then they come and look at the center of the room and I'm playing acoustically and they have no choice but to stop and listen to what I'm doing. And what does it take for that to happen? For that scenario to take place? Like what are you looking at when you look at the crowd and you, that gets you to that If point? I see like most of the crowd they're not paying attention right. um, then that's when I'll do that. Oh my god I'm paying attention to everything you say. I'll never <laughs> not look at you. Oh, that's that's so scary. You know, it's not it's not it's not a thing. It's just, right. it's that my job is to entertain the audience. When that's I get on the stage and I'm not satisfied unless I walk away with a new fan or the fact that we have shared an experience. If if you're doing your own thing, that's fine. But I want to share something with you. I, I have 45 minutes up to an hour and a half to share right. like myself with you, and it takes a lot of courage to get up on stage and pull yourself out there. I want to make sure that you know it you're listening to, I want you to have a chance to drop in with me and have a moment with me before we decide to part ways for the rest of the evening and do what you gotta do. That sounds like a speech you would give at a show. Like that sounds like No, like, I don't mean I don't wanna make that sound no, like a bad thing. I just No, I like, think it's kinda cool. I think it's great <laughs> that, that you have that go that kutzpah, you know, like you can do, you can even go there. I think it's amazing. I guess I I wouldn't say That's a jersey in you. That's the I jersey guess. girl, right? It's not so much because I want their attention. They can hate it. I just want to get, have the opportunity to share it with them. And, and, you know, since you are from Jersey, we should just briefly mention Hurricane Sandy because so much has been going on at the Jersey Shore. And you live at the Jersey Shore. You live at Asbury Park. I do. So you, you were at ground zero when the storm hit. I, I, I was actually in the evacuation zone in my apartment. Wow. And, and I know you've been doing a lot to restore the shore. Like the whole Jersey Strong thing. It's pretty remarkable for people all over the world that don't haven't seen the Jersey Shore or don't know the history. It's such an emotional part of people's lives that live in New Jersey. Yeah. It really is. It was pretty crazy. I mean, I really shouldn't have stayed there. Um, but I, I mean, we've had so many hurricanes over the years. I yeah. just kind of didn't. Think of it, there was like a police guy like going back and forth on the street saying like, evacuate your building, and I was like, no! And it's just me, my cat, and like, um, this woman named Lori, who she never leaves, she never leaves, she doesn't care, she doesn't leave. <laughs> so it was me and her, and uh, and then my bedroom ceiling kind of caved in during that experience, but uh, wow. I'm glad I stayed and didn't go to my parents' house because then I would have been stuck there for two weeks because they had two trees that fell and they couldn't leave the house. So I would have been with my brothers, six dogs, six cats, um, my family, everybody would have been there and I would have gone crazy. You could just sing for them, just entertain them the whole time. Oh gosh, I don't I don't think they need as entertaining in that house. They have plenty of entertainment going on. The, one of the biggest challenges I think for a singer is when you have to sing the Star Spangled Banner. Yes. Have you ever had to sing it? Um, you know what, I almost, I, I, like five times I was this close to having to sing it and then I, I ended up not having to sing it, and thank goodness, because it was possibly like the most like nerve-wracking nerve thing. Nerve thing you know what the key is? You gotta you gotta start it low. People start the song too high, and they can't get to the end. Well, it's a ridiculous song. It's like the like easy, it's, easy. It goes from no, I'm saying musically. No, okay. yeah, and well, it's musically, it's, I'm not it's saying very, the song is beautiful, but it's like takes like someone a freak of nature to be able to like execute it perfectly. Yeah, like it starts from here, and then it's here, and then it's here, and it's there, and it's just like it's so very. It's we're, we're not gonna make you sing it. I would appreciate if you didn't. No, without, <laughs> normally we would. Normally would make you have to sing, but we're not gonna do that to you today. So, so oh my God. we're gonna have you sing. You're gonna perform. Yes. Uh, and we're gonna pay attention. You don't and, have I to. I swear to God, we're not okay, gonna take our eyes. Like we are not nightmare. gonna take our eyes off of you. I'm not a nightmare. I promise. He the, brings it out of you, me. If you start yelling at us, <laughs> uh, no. So you're gonna sing. And um, and then we'll wrap the show up and ask you what's going on next Sounds in your like life. Sign the plan. Yes. It's not so bad, right? You're having a good time. I'm having a great time. You are. Yeah, we're gonna go see the strippers later. Okay, right? I, absolutely. <laughs> we'll be right back after we see the strippers. This song is called Magic, and it's for Chauncey because he is my soulmate and the only man I've ever loved. <laughs> 